Hello, this is Jim McKeith, Lead Worldwide Developer Evangelist from Bracadero Technologies, and welcome to this FireDAC Skill Sprint on Local SQL. Great thing about FireDAC is it works everywhere across all platforms, all languages, and all tools. This is Local SQL, so it's available in Pro as well as Enterprise Editions, and uh, like I said, all languages, all platforms, etc. Great stuff. If you're developing now, you can take advantage of this technology. So. FD Local SQL lets you run SQL queries locally on any T dataset descendant. So once you've retrieved that data into a local data set, so you've got it in memory in your application, you can now run a SQL query against that using local SQL without making a round trip to the server. So this allows you to pull a subset of data from that data set. Now the cool thing is, is this can simplify your code. So let's say you've pulled down a set of data and you want to then uh, maybe display a subset of that to the user or do some manipulation on that or summaries, etc. You can do that local, with local SQL without having to loop through all of your records again and again and again and again. Very cool. An amazing thing though is you can actually do join queries between heterogeneous data sources. So let's say you're connecting to both an Oracle database and a SQL Server database and you pull that data down in two different data sets using two different uh, connection components even, and you can then run a local SQL across both of those data sets. Wow, so cool, very neat stuff. Uh, in addition to queries, selecting things, you can also do inserts, ups and updates and deletes. So all of your CRUD or uh, DML operations, um, and all those are supported within transactions and save points. So a few uses, like I said, uh, heterogeneous queries, or if you want to do an uh, in-memory data set, you can do that with FD MIM table, although it's a uh, pretty nice upgrade if you go with the full IB Lite, Interbase Lite, embeddable database, which is available as part of your license as well. So it's great having options, but keep that in mind if you're looking for a local database. Uh, you can also do an advanced offline mode, so you connect to your database, you cache that data locally, and then you go offline, and you can then run SQL queries against that cached data. You can also use it to beef up your data snap client so that you can pull the data down from the server and then do work on that data locally. Also, let's say you have an existing application that's connecting to a different database using third-party components. If you want to migrate that to a different database, maybe or something like that, you could use the uh, local SQL to move some of that data around between these different third-party dataset components. So while local SQL does a lot, it doesn't do everything. Uh, like I said, it does your, your DML and your CRUD operations. It doesn't do DDL, okay? So if you need to do something like an alter table or add column, instead what you do is on the FD mem table or whatever in-memory data set you're using, you would just modify the data set to add the column or change the column type. Likewise, if you need to drop a table, all you would do is go to the local SQL component and remove the reference to the table. The table's gone. Fixes that. Uh, if you need to create index, create an index or drop an index, you would use the index property of the data set. And same thing for triggers. Instead of creating in triggers, you would use the events for the data set. So let's look at the architecture, how you put all these components together. You're going to start out with one or more T dataset descendants. These are the things that are holding your source data that you want to query against. So get this from whatever data source that you're going to get it from. And then you're going to put down an FD connection and you're going to specify the SQLite driver. SQLite provides the engine inside uh, for local SQL. And with anytime you're using FireDAC, you need to put down the uh, T weight cursor or the FD GUI X weight cursor. Um, so go ahead and add that component as well. Then you're going to put down an FD local SQL component and connect it to that connection. Once you've done that on the FD local SQL component, there is a date property that's a collection of data sets. So you're going to use that property to specify all the data sets you want to include in your uh, local SQL engine. Okay, simple enough. Then you're going to put down a FD query or FD command, and you're going to put all your SQL in there that you want to execute against those uh, data sets. And then you just have to activate everything. So you want to activate your data sets that are your source of your data first, then activate your local SQL second, and then activate your 
query component last so that it's able to pull the data. So when you activate TFD local SQL, that's when it sets up the local SQL engine. So it has to have those data sets active so it's able to interrogate those. And then you activate the query, it connects to the local SQL engine in order to pull those, pull the data out for you. Let's take a look at FD local SQL in action. Now I want to create a sample, a demo here that showed the flexibility and power of local SQL, but also hopefully is easy to follow and understand. So uh, hopefully that's what I've accomplished here. Hopefully at least it's really cool. <laughs> so here what we have is I've got one, two, three, four, five entirely different data sets. Okay, we have uh, ADO data set, uh, FD MIM table, IBX, T client data set, and a, a DB Express data set. All right, and so each of these are pulling a different set of data down, and we're going to query across all these using local SQL. So let's walk through this here. I have a uh, DB Express customers table, a REST components here that are going out and querying a REST service and populating a client data set. Now, normally I would populate an FD MIM table, but I wanted to use a T client data set just to mix things up and show flexibility. Here we're using IBX to get our sales table. Here I'm using an FD MIM table and I'm populating it via code. So right here, I'm adding in some records into it. So this is a simple uh, table. that's just gonna provide uh, a a union between two different tables. Um, I've also saved it off to a file so that I can load it at design time. So that makes it easier to demo, but it also can be populated via code. And then lastly, I have ADO connecting to a um, access database and it's getting our regions table. Okay, so whatever data source you're using, any T data set descendant, uh, these are all the ones we happen to ship, but it could be a third party T data set descendant, doesn't matter. However you're gonna to connect to a database, however you're gonna populate a data set, do that. Then you're gonna put down your FD connection and specify the driver name of SQLite. Remember, also put down your weight cursor. Uh, it's gonna be specific to whichever platform you're on. Um, and then you're gonna put down your local SQL component. So local SQL component is specified the FD connection that we've put down that's pointing to SQLite. And then we come into our data sets property and in this collection here, we specify all of the data sets we want. So I have the uh, CDS REST, and then I gave it a friendly name of REST. So the cool thing is about the friendly name is in my SQL I'm gonna write, I just referenced it by that friendly name here. So the customers table becomes customers, okay? Very cool there. This provides us a nice little layer of uh, uh, indirection to those components so we're not stuck to whatever the table name or component name is for the source. Once you've done that, then you put down your FD query or FD command. In this case, I'm using a query, point it to the same connection here. So FD connection and write your SQL. Now what I have here is a join. that's gonna go through and join either's table, even with an outer join down here. Ooh, exciting stuff. Um, before I run that, I'm gonna do a little spelunking. So we'll come up here and I'll just put a little uh, comment on this. And so let's go ahead and do select a star from customers. So this is going to do a local query against this data set. There we go there, there's our customers table. Um, this is really cool, watch this. I can do a SQL query against a REST data source. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. I'll go ahead and um, resize this here so you can see some of those columns. With with uh, REST JSON, there's nothing that specifies the column width. And so all the columns are huge, but that's okay. Um, you can see the data's there. Okay, so now let's do a, a query against uh, IBX. That's the sales table. Execute, you can see that. And now we're going to do a query against the in-memory data set, the FDMM table. Now the cool thing here is this data set was populated from code. So anytime you have some data that is in columns and rows and you think, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could run a SQL query against this data? Guess what? Now you can. Watch this. So I think it's called uh, REST sales reps. That's got a long one because it's a 
yeah, one-to-one relationship here. So it's the ID, the rest ID, which is comes from here and the sales rep from here. So it's just joining those two values together so that I can do a join for it. Okay, so I'm not gonna do the ADO, behaves the same way, but this is really cool, really exciting that I can run a SQL statement against a REST data source. I can run a SQL query statement against an in-memory data set that was populated in code. And now for the coolest part ever is I can actually do a join across all these different data sources. Watch this. Boom, look at that. I just did a query across a REST data source, across an in-memory data set, across uh, access table, uh, inner base, IB Express, whatever. It doesn't matter. I can do queries against it. Uh, just one column from each table here just to show that I'm connected to them. But uh, very cool stuff. So you can see here, this is region descriptions that outer join. So we scroll down to the bottom. We see some of those records are missing. That's okay. Outer join works. Cool stuff. Very cool. Very exciting. This is hopefully you're excited about this. You're as excited about this as I am because this is really cool stuff. Uh, very amazing to be able to do this and to, to do it so simply. All you have to do is include the connection, the local SQL component, and then your query, and you're off to the races. This has been a uh, introduction to FD local SQL. Uh, in summary, it is works with any T data set descendant. It supports your DML and CRUD operations, but not your DDL, and it supports transactions and save points. Uh, internally, it's using SQLite. So uh, any limitations to SQLite's queries are the limitations you're going to run into. Also, you can use it to query across multiple heterogeneous data sets, which is really amazing, really cool stuff there. We just scratched the surface, just the tip of the iceberg. If you want more information, check out the samples uh, available there. This is Object Pascal only. There are, I believe, three different samples in that folder, and some of them are pretty interesting. So check those out there. You may need to edit data sources, et cetera, to make it work, but I was able to get them working and played with them. The doc wiki has some articles in there. So the first one is an overview of local SQL, walks you through the steps and the requirements, et cetera. So good information there. And the second link that you see there is the library reference. There's some links down here at the bottom. The most important one is the one in bold, which is the link to delphi.org slash question mark P equals 1951. And that has a link to everything else you see here. So if you don't write down those complicated YouTube links, don't worry, just visit my blog and you can get the links to those as well as in the future, the replay slides, stuff like that as well. So uh, first video you see there is Dimitri's uh, video about FireDAC local SQL. So much more information than I was able to provide in this video. And Dimitri is the author of FireDAC, so you can't get more authoritative than that. Check that out for more information. Also the Code Rage 9 video he did on FireDAC's tips, tricks, and news, not specific to local SQL, but very cool stuff, the most recent video he's put out about FireDAC. So uh, check that out for some good information, good overview, more information about uh, local about FireDAC. Also, Jens Fudge did a local SQL video as well, uh, Skill Sprint. So check that out. He's going to walk you through start to finish building an app that connects to uh, a data store or uses local SQL to read an in-memory data set. So check that one out as well. Very cool stuff. So next time we have a preview of Box2D. This is a sneak preview for a future release. This is part of the regular skill sprint series. So make sure you're signed up for the regular skill sprint series at the link down at the bottom. It's the first sign up box on the left once you get there. This is gonna happen on uh, Tuesday, March 24th. So Box2D is a 2D physics engine, cross-platform physics engine. This is some pretty cool stuff, pretty exciting new things to see this sort of features integrated into our favorite development tools. So check it out at the times you see there. I'll point out that daylight savings time is moving things around. So uh, the Tokyo time appeared to be different from the last time for me. Maybe you've already made that adjustment, but make sure you're getting there at the right time because of daylight savings time. We go off San Francisco time. So use timeanddate.com and uh, figure it out from there. Next FireDAC skill sprint we have is the BDE to interbase migration. So this is gonna tell you how to migrate away from Paradox and BDE, which are deprecated, to interbase, IB Lite, and FireDAC. Take advantage of all these great new features in your applications that are still taking a, still using BDE and uh, Paradox. 
that's on Thursday, the 26th of March at the times you see there. If you're telling a friend about it, they can go to the uh, landing page and use the second sign up link on the left to sign up for the skill sprint. Also, I want to tell you about the special offers. Right now is the perfect storm, the pinnacle of special offers. All these great things have come together at once to give you the best opportunity to upgrade to XC7. So not only do you upgrade to XC7 from any previous version and save up to 45% because you get upgrade pricing. So if you're on uh, Delphi, whatever, Rad Studio, any version, upgrade to XC7, save 45% upgrade pricing. Uh, also you get the next version free, which we're going to have a preview of. We've had a few other previews of, so see some of those new features and say, Hey, I got to have them upgrade to XC7 now. And you get that version when it's released. Also, if you upgrade to enterprise, you get 10 users of a 10 user license of EMS for free. EMS is the new enterprise mobility services. Lots of great features there. Um, also you get the free bonus pack, $700 value. It's got books, add-ins, productivity tools, cool stuff there. And the BOGO, buy one, get one. You get another tool of equal or lesser cost free in addition to your purchase. All this expires March 31st, so don't let time run out. For more information, visit Embarcadero.com slash rad offer. And now it's time for Q&A, but I will bring up that slide with more information for you. So if you need to copy down to those links, you still can. I hope this is not confusing. Just make sure I'm hearing what you're saying. You can run a query on a database returning a result data set. Then you can run local SQL to further query the result data set, creating a new data set. Can I then repeat and run a local SQL on the result data set from that local SQL data set? You know what? I have not tried that, but there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that. Uh, because you would have to create a whole new instance of local SQL and a whole new FD connection. So what would result is you'd have a whole new um, instance of the local SQL engine. And then, yes. So, yeah, I, I haven't tried that, Paul, but uh, I don't see any reason why not. The uh, I just realized that link uh, 1951 is not live yet, so I will get that live very shortly here after we're finished with the q and I apologize for that. I was recording last night with my new setup and I had something messed up and I had to re-record everything again so I was spent a lot more time on the recording than I would have liked. Um, so there's a link here it says uh, asking about or a question here about why is the JSON produced by uh, saving a FD mem table to file larger than saving an FD query to file. I haven't actually compared those JSON files directly, which is what I would need to do, but I believe that because the FD mem table is actually defining a table in memory, it probably has some additional metadata that's being saved off. Um, so you have to look at that. I have to look at that and compare those two files to see what the difference is. Uh, Antonio point out, pointed out finally a real BDE replacement with heterogeneous join. I know this is so cool that you can do this. Um, one of the other examples that's in the samples folder shows doing a, uh, a join between a CVS data source, so it's loading data from common separated values and a memory data set. So cool, so cool that you can just treat all data sets the same. It doesn't matter where it's coming from, you can now uh, use it however you want to. Uh, Craig wants to know how transactions are handled when querying data from multiple data sets, databases. So if I understand correctly, the um, when the before the transaction is committed, when you're up making an update to local SQL, the data is all within the local SQL engine. But then as soon as you commit that um, update, then it is written to the target databases, or uh, sorry, the target data source data sets. Now, it's still possible that after that you could, um, or you would at that point you would need to then commit that data set to the database. Okay, so you have an additional level of indirection here. You have the local SQL engine where you can make updates and commit them there, and then for local SQL engine, once it's, they're committed from there, they're committed to the data set, and then once you're satisfied with that, you can then 
uh, push the update from the data set to the database. So uh, David was asking a link to the replays. There is the uh, YouTube playlist, which is in there. You can just go to the YouTube, and it has a playlist listing all of the uh, mo that's the most recent gonna, most recent replays there. I can have all of them up there on YouTube as soon as they're up there, which can they get up there pretty quick. Um, you can also go to the Skill Sprint landing page. To the YouTube channel landing page, that's got everything. The de developer skill sprints, it's got the developer skill sprints and the fire deck. But if you go to the YouTube channel, you can also, there's a separate list just for fire deck skill sprints. And David's asking, do you still use data modules? Uh, yes, you can still use data modules, including put all the non-visual components you saw Jim use in this demo. Uh, data yep. modules have been around for a long time, and they work with live bindings as long as the used unit is available in your user interface unit, your form unit. So, yes, uh, data modules. Yeah, by all means, use data modules. I just... Um didn't use them here because I wanted to have everything visible at once on the form, but I could have done this all just on the module as well instead of the form. But then I couldn't have had the nice little group boxes to show where everything was. How everything related. For some reason, I'm getting multiple posts, I guess. I'm not sure if people are clicking multiple times or if it's because of some Mac version of GoToWebinar. But in any case, uh, Gene is asking, is there a way to access the resources? And when Jim post that link live delphi.org slash question mark p equals 1951 that blog post when that's live then that page will have all these links so yep I'll have all those all the links you see on the screen will be up on that blog post at uh, 1951 in yep. just a few minutes after this ends and for the rest it's like Google search fire DAC local SQL fire or DAC, Jens Fudge, uh, local SQL, YouTube or something. But, but maybe in the future, Jim, we'll have to get all the presenters to have their URLs ready in like a notepad and paste them into the chat window or something like that. I mean, that's a, a good idea. Or if they get them, maybe I'll ask them from the presenters so I have them and I can just be pasting him into the chat window. But the main one is just go to delphi.org. Remember that number or not, you can see Jim's blog in the case of Jim. Yep. Uh, so Lars is asking, for the local SQL engine syntax, uh, we follow the SQLite dialect. Yes, it, it's running, it's using SQLite as the engine, so uh, when you're getting down to the more specific things, you're dealing with SQLite at that point. So that link there, the first one that said the DocWiki Rad Studios Ian local underscore SQL underscore Fire Deck, yeah, talks about that in a little more detail. So check that one out. Question here from George asking if uh, the DB components can be dynamically uh, can be loaded dynamically from DLL files and if the components support multiple database connections. As far as I know, the answer is yes to both of those. Um, I probably the best way to do it would be to do it through packages, load the components through packages, but um, uh, there's lots of different options as far as how to attack, tackle that. And yes, you can support multiple connections. Yeah, just drop down multiple FD connection components. Uh, as you mentioned, Jim, if you were talking to Oracle and Interbase and maybe MySQL to do something with local SQL via all of those, just multiple FD connection components or uh, open up an FD connection component, set the parameters and types, get the data you need, close the connection, change the parameters of the connection. So you could do it with one FD connection as well just by caching the data after you did the query before you close the connection. So was there a question earlier about uh, if you could chain this. So if you could have a data set that had some data in it and then set up a local SQL to query that data set and then take the query that's resulted from that and set up another local SQL and query that as well. Um, I have not tried that. I haven't seen any documentation that says you couldn't. 
I would suspect that you could, um, just by a matter of setting up, like David was saying, having a, another FD connection using SQLite pointing to, and then have the another local SQL component pointing to the FD query that queried the data last time. So, yeah, I believe you should be able to do that. Um, there is, uh, of course, a memory. You know, depending on how much data you're pulling down there, eventually you could run out of memory. But uh, most computers are pretty have quite a bit of memory on them, so it's probably not going to be an issue for the most part. So Walter's asking if there's any plans for an ORM from Embarcadero like Aurelius or MORMOT. Um, I don't believe there's anything like that on the roadmap. No, there's no current plans. I mean, Aurelius is great. There's a Delphi ORM, Mormot. There's other people playing around with ORMs. Um, you should check those out. Uh, we have, uh, I think it was Code Rage 7 or 8. There's a session on Aurelius by TMS, so you can check that out. Sir James is asking if there's any plans for FireDAX FD MIM table to support nested data sets. Um, nested data sets. It does support it now. I just yep. created one and added one in there just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. But yeah, you can add a nested data set in yep. a FD MIM table. So uh, Heather was asking if there are multiple tables that, from the same database that you want to include in your local SQL engine, what's the best way to do that? I believe that you're going to want to have a separate data set for each one because the... Um, Data set collections, data sets collections on the local SQL component is going to point to actual data sets. So that's going to be your best way to uh, provide those. Um, so yeah, you're probably going to want to. Someone was asking earlier if you wanted to, if you need to do this all in the main form or if it could be done in a uh, data module. Data modules, by all means, the way to go. I just did them on this uh, forum so that I could put the little group boxes around things and show how everything lined up nicely. So yeah, definitely put them on data, data modules and uh, you can include, you should be able to include data sets from different data modules in the local SQL engine as well. And I guess also at Heather's question, I was reading it as if some of the tables are related to each other inside of the single database, you could do a SQL select, you end up with a new data set that you would have in memory, but I guess it depends on it's true what you need to do with those, with the data from those different tables. Yeah, so if you have, if that's, that, that's something that's really cool about this, and I didn't really get into it. There's so much cool stuff about this feature, but you're, you're not just limited to including data sets containing just single tables in there. It could be a data set or a query component that is querying across multiple tables, uh, doing, you know, complex SQL magic in there, and then take that result set in the data set, and then do another local SQL statement on there. And so when you think about this as being able to do multiple steps of SQL statements, then that's where you're really unlocking the power of local SQL, is that you're able to really leverage the set operations that SQL give you, gives you to uh, get a lot more done with a lot less code. Uh, Neville's asking what version of FireDAC this was introduced in. Uh, is it recent or is it available back in um, XE4? Okay. FireDeck was introduced late for IO XE4. Okay. It was rolled in as FireDeck. It released at XE5, I'm pretty sure. So Heather's asking, uh, uh, says that you stated that insert, update, and delete are supported. What if you're attempting to perform an action like this onto a data source linked to a text file? So I'm guessing like reading in from a CSV file or something like that. Uh, and then if this works just fine, which in parentheses, wow, editing fi text files via SQL, I know it's pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what would what would happen if you only had read-only access to the file? What's the error handling like? So yeah, editing the data set, right? You're not editing the underlying contents. You could save the data set. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. You would. You, so there's three stages here that's going to happen. You're going to use um, the components to serialize or uh, convert the text file into a data set into an FD mem table. Then you're going to connect that FT MIM table to the local SQL engine. And then you're going to run your command against the local SQL engine. Now, as soon as you commit that change, the uh, insert, update, or delete to the local SQL engine, it will then push it back to the data set. And then at that point, you would then need to take the data set and write it back to the text file. So at that point is when you would get the error like, oh, hey, you don't have uh, write permission to this text file. And you'd be able to deal with it during that portion of the operation. Something I love about the questions is there's always all these things like, oh, 
I hadn't really thought about that, but that's a great question. <laughs> that's a really good idea. I had someone earlier ask uh, if uh, you could chain uh, multiple uh, local SQLs. So, for example, uh, have some data sets and then do use a local SQL engine to query those data sets. So do a join across multiple heterogeneous data sets. And then use local SQL to target that new data set or that new data set that was created as a result of that query. I, there, I don't see any reason why not. You would just need to have an entirely new uh, local SQL component and uh, FD connection. And if you've done that, then yeah, that, you should be able to do that. And so, I mean, the possibilities there are just mind blowing. <laughs> All right, well, great. Well, thanks everyone for joining us and uh, good luck and have fun and using local SQL to query your local data sets. It's a really powerful feature. And like I was showing in this demo, I was, for example, querying a REST service, or as Heather pointed out, you could query a text file, a CSV file. So this is the kind of stuff that you can use even if you're not connecting to a database. And this is also available, all available in the pro version of uh, Rad Studio Delphi and C++ Builder. So great, powerful feature, something that you can use in uh, most all your applications that you're developing. So exciting stuff. Thank you.